Kia ora, called Karen Oliver, Toko Ingoa, Like Minds, Like Minds Coordinator here at Supporting Families, Wairarapa. I have a team of 11 presenters and we go out into the community and we present workshops around stigma and discrimination, hearing voices that are distressing. We have a weekly radio show and all the presenters get to participate in that uh, at whatever level they're comfortable with. It's on a Monday from 10 to 11 and so we interview anybody that's in the community. It can be people who have been part of the recovery for our presenters, it might be their whanau members, it could be people in the community that uh, happy to talk about their lived experience with mental illness. We've had people that have um, stopped me in the street and, and talked to me about the show and, and uh, that they've tuned in and found it really helpful. We've also had people ring up the radio station and say, that's great, you know, can you, you know, keep it up? And uh, we had awards last year and our show got an award. This year we're entering a national radio competition. That's with the interview that uh, Daniel did with John Kerwin and that we recorded when he came to the book launch. In fact, John Kerwin at the end said to Daniel, how long have you been a journalist for? And Daniel said, just today. <laughs> and so it was really like, wow, that's, you know, it was a fabulous interview. And uh, so I think that was probably a pretty surreal moment for Daniel. I think the first time time did the show was about October 2009. I'd just started on the other side of the controls and I was just um, interviewed uh, another person. And then I sat behind here with Corinne, I think while she was doing the show, and uh, just sort of watched and wrote, wrote notes. And I think the first time I really did it by myself, Corinne went out for just a second, for just, it was supposed to be just a second thing. And the um, song was playing in the, um, in the meantime, and but she came in like later, and so I was forced with no option but to just go on by myself. And yeah, it was probably the best way to do it, I think. Now I've been able to um, do pretty much about a show myself about once a month. It's quite weird doing the radio because um, I actually have Tourette syndrome. And when I, um, but when the radio's on, especially when it's live and that, um, you know, I don't, I don't have uh, ticks. Like ticks are just sort of the thing that I do, I might suddenly just start moving around or making sort of random noises or something. Quite weird having Tourette's syndrome and then, yeah, actually being able to just go on there onto live radio, it seems like the last sort of person you'd want. Often people don't ask people about their experience because of the fear, uh, you know, am I going to say the wrong thing? And I always say to people, ask ask away, you know, it's better that you ask and um, then sit there and don't ask. So, you know, absolutely, you know, anything's, um, you know, a go, we'll talk about it with you. If you go and visit somebody who is unwell and they don't answer the door, don't let that be a barrier, don't let that put you off to going back again. And, you know, um, whether you, put, you know, pop a card in the post, because people, it's really nice to get mail, nice mail, that's not a bill, and um, pop a card in the post to them, and, and certainly um, that's what I did for my whanau down in Christchurch after the earthquake. For myself, when I was suffering from depression, my father was one of the main key support people. I was in Adelaide at the time and he actually lent me the money to come back. I was in a not a very good relationship and it was my marriage and wanted to come back home and uh, my mother made the comment, you know, you made your bed, you lie on it. Well, that didn't help me at all. Whereas my father, um, the divorce by the way, but my father was the one that was supportive. I didn't know who to talk to about it. I think that was the thing, you know, who do I tell about what's happening for me? And there, there was also that fear of having the children taken off you because you weren't well. Having key people that stay involved is really important. Sometimes people can become overprotective of the person who's unwell because they're worried about what might happen for them out and I suppose in the um, community so they become you know can become overprotective and not let their loved one actually go and do things for themselves. Part and parcel of the journey is if you can walk alongside of somebody not in front of them or behind them but alongside of them and be supportive then that makes a huge difference. We know that caregivers of somebody who's unwell and this goes right across the board any caregiver can um, burn themselves out that like they forget to look after themselves they're busy looking after their loved one and they actually you know forget to actually do that stuff to keep themselves well and so it's compassion fatigue and also uh, counsellors and people that work in the area of any supporting agencies can often um, become fatigued from it and so it's about looking 
looking after yourselves as well as the caregiver and recognising that it's really important that you look after yourself first and foremost before you can actually look after somebody else. And certainly that's what we do um, with the Light Minds team as well, is that work on looking after ourselves and keeping ourselves well. Walking the talk, I suppose, so when we go out and present, we're also presenting our best foot forward. Treat your loved one or your friend the same way that you did before you found out that they had a mental illness. When my friend discovered that she had breast cancer, I went to the uh, Cancer Society here and got some books, read up about it, and tried to find out for myself um, information rather than ask her all the time. I wanted to know how I could support and what was happening for her, you know, so as well as asking, I also read up. So become informed, come into places like supporting families, get some um, brochures, get some pamphlets, read some other people's stories stories, you know, come along to the Like Minds, Like Minds workshops, hear some of the presenters share their stories. Don't be afraid to ask questions when people say to you, what would you like to know? Ask those questions and I think that's how you'll change your perception because you'll become informed and people that become informed have that power to make those decisions. Mm -hmm.